Thanks, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Try not one, are we? He always thinks he knows what he's doing. Always thinks he knows best. Only light in a fire. So, since it's uh, November, now in the UK, and it's the end of, nearly the end of the calendar year, but the end of the season, uh, we sat in front of the fire on a, a cold autumn winter evening, and um, we thought, well, Johnny thought it'd be a, a good time to do a bit of a recap of the season. Why don't you start with what was the highlight of the season? Um, it's not been my finest year this year. It's probably been my worst year as a senior. Um, but my highlight uh, was racing this is the last Super League in Mallorca. It's a race I actually enjoyed, it actually felt good. I felt like I was fit, I felt like I was competitive, and it's why I do racing was to be in a battle like I was in. Um, that's why I enjoy racing, that's why I do the training that I do sometimes. And um, it was great fun, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but that was one of the only real, real main highlights of the year. What about the worst point? The worst point for me was Leeds. Um, it was one of the toughest races I've ever had to do. Uh, you know, yeah, you look pretty bad to be fair. Yeah, I look pretty bad. Um, so in Leeds, I um, had raced Nottingham a few days before and I'd either got sick from the water or sick from the food in, in the hotel in Nottingham. I'm not quite sure. And I didn't feel great, but as you'll know, as all the athletes out there will know um, who do a race, you never feel that good before a race. You know, you're always worried, not sure if it's nerves. Watching it, I did wonder whether you were just being really sensible and just taking uh, taking a bit of a different tactic on the bike and sitting in and conserving. And then obviously I saw you got dropped and I thought... I couldn't well, go to the front. And since, since I'm not there, you should be getting dropped. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't go to the front and then um, the worst and most humiliated bit of my career was by running around the Leeds Town Centre for two and a half k, the longest two and a half k of my life. And then eventually I pulled out, I went to A&E and uh, got out about two o'clock in the morning. So it's not the ideal way to race the Leeds World Series, but that's my highs and lows. Uh, it's not been your best year either. Um, so what's been... Uh, there's a fire here to take care of. Let's do that. Okay, we'll do, it, we'll do it at the same time. <laughs> no, we'll, 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 we can do two things at once. The high is obviously um, probably the World Centre Point 3 champs. Um, I really had kind of four or five weeks to prepare for that and threw everything I had at it in the preparation of the race and you know crossing that finish line. I knew I'd given everything I had on that day and I was really satisfied with that um, and you know the performance just wasn't good enough to win and that was fine and Jan Fridino's performance was incredible um, and I was happy with that um, you know that said I obviously did want to win um, the lows well there was lots of them this year uh, probably low points were actually outside racing when I was kind of questioning um, if if uh, certain injuries would ever clear up and whether I'd kind of ever race again uh, and, oh, and the goal coast getting the the goal coast that was a bit of a low as well oh yeah that's a bit low but um, well, so that's the, very low actually in the water. I was pushed under. <laughs> at the world thirty point three champs, uh, did you actually stand on the start line thinking you could win? Yeah. I'd seen what training you done before. Your training partners have seen what training you've done before, and I don't think your, your longest run was probably about I don't know thirteen, fourteen kilometres. Well, I didn't really think done. I could win. You obviously think you could win all the time, but uh, rather than standing on the start line knowing that I'm in control of this, however it goes, I knew I needed the the right circumstances, and that was for the bike to split probably away from um, Gomez and, and Jan Frodeno, uh, as it was on the day, you know, I don't think, um, unless I, my running was absolutely fantastic, I was beating Jan Frodeno any other way. Um, and, but those circumstances didn't play out and I hit the run knowing that I had to run the, um, the best 21k I probably ever had. And um, 16, 15, 16k in, I'm, I'm running along and um, thinking I'm gonna come third here. You know, the other two guys are up the road, I'm not gonna catch them now. Uh, I can cruise around this last four or five k and not destroy my legs and actually um, be okay for the next week. Um, and then uh, Booker, who was running the other way, was like, Gomez is slowing down. Coach Mitch was like, Gomez is slowing down. I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to actually chase him down now. <laughs> so yeah, I did chase hard and um, those last 5k, I think, took a lot out of me physically, to be honest with you, because I just didn't have the, the volume of training to cope with it. What's to do it now? There we go, I'll try to interview. And here he is, back, cooking back. his tea. Back. Question's got a bit boring. So I'll count on them. So we're talking about the World Tech Club Free Champs, and basically you're saying that chasing Gomez wrecked the end of your season because you went too hard. So is it Gomez's fault? Yeah, pretty much. Thanks, <laughs> <Mugs> Gomez. <laughs> um, so, 70.3 Racing, from an outsider, 
Uh, do you think you've got the recovery from a 70.3 race right so far? No, it depends, because uh, I haven't done that many, I think it depends, you know, there's some that I've done, so actually I raced in Dubai earlier this year, and actually if you manage to keep it under that level, um, you seem to recover pretty well off them. Um, I think the World Champs was the first one I've ever actually raced, for example, and um, I think if you race the whole, whatever it is, 3 hours 40 of it, I think it's a bit of a different story. But well, after the Worlds this time, do you think you're going to be competitive or win Gold Coast? Or do you always think that's going to I think I was going to struggle to win, but I, I just wanted to be there to do the, you know, the pretty much the only chance I had at the United ITU race. So I thought I'd recover, you know, I think two weeks would, would be plenty of time to recover. I've actually done 7.3, is two weeks apart in the past, I mean, absolutely fine. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought, I thought I'd be okay, but yeah, it turned out, well, it didn't matter in the end, but yeah, I didn't feel myself. But I think I didn't feel myself for a few weeks after that as well, to be honest. Okay. And then um, you are. What about Beijing? Was that not a highlight? You enjoyed running up and down all those stairs. No. Well, I always like races this year, being competitive in and being at the front in Beijing. Was that I felt really actually felt the best whole the whole year in Beijing. I was in control throughout the whole thing. Well, it's easy to feel good when you're actually winning. That's it? the problem. But um, I really I really enjoyed the non-drafting. I really enjoyed getting ready for the non-drafting. Although I rode my time trial bike about five times. Um, Excuses are coming in already. No, well, that's the fair. <laughs> you saw it. Training mates saw it. Um, and then I never enjoyed that race, it was something different, it was more relaxed and um, be on the start line rather than being super nervous about the World Series race, it's something I was looking forward to doing and um, the course was really good, I enjoyed running down the stairs and I actually think the whole Beijing hard course, the travel meant that I didn't race very well on Jersey the week after and one thing I don't think I've done very well in the last few years is get the hang of the travel and the recovery from, from travelling, uh, but hopefully I can do that. What have you learned in the whole year? So if you've got, if you've got a few lessons you've learned, you're, you're a seasoned athlete now, and you're yeah, still learning. Well, I don't really like talking about learning points too much because I feel that it's really easy to slide into learning becoming an excuse for failure. So, uh, and I've thought that for a long time. But yeah, I think there is things, you know, obviously 70.3 is still a relatively new thing for me, and I think to respect the distance is a, a big thing, especially if you're going to a really major race against really top level competitors, you've got to respect racing at that distance. Um, I think I've learned quite a bit about how to prepare for them and the kind of running that I need to do and actually how far you can get off, you know, some good running but being really, really fit. Um, so I've learned a bit about that and uh, my kind of nutrition especially, um, you know, working with the guys at OTE and experimenting with my long sessions, um, I've learned a lot about how to uh, what's the best n nutrition strategy for that kind of racing, which is basically you can't eat too much sugar. <laughs> but this, for, to take into next year, I think I need to know when to rest, mm. when to take it easy, and when to go harder. And um, I need to be better at that, but then don't all athletes. Um, I don't think, I think we, what we both got wrong, but especially me, was trying to get ready for an, a big race in April. Uh, they come up, normally we've got a tried and tested method to get fit for August time. <laughs> but I don't think I did very well uh, to get ready for the come-off games in April and then I was on the back foot all year. But it was very important to finish on a high mm -hmm. for me. It meant that uh, it's easy to take a break because sometimes when you're not at a good year you, you want to keep on going because you feel like you've got to catch up. So that's it's uh, meant I've gone into a break happy and happy to take two weeks off. Uh, and it means I'll start uh, winter training uh, more, more positively. I'll be more excited to do that. Um, and maybe it'd be, it'd be better for that because I won't rush things a little bit more because I'll know that I'm not as far away as I thought I was because this year I've doubted myself quite a lot. Am I ever going to get back to where I was and, and beat those people? So after the Super League, I finished on a high, it swapped me. I can be competitive again and um, hopefully that'll mean I'll be a lot more patient in the first few weeks of winter training, which I think is very, very important for all athletes out there. I look forward to seeing that. And uh, all right, I think that pretty much concludes all the questions we've got before you put our entire audience to sleep and they never watch one of our videos ever again. You need some new jokes now. <laughs> yeah. If you've got any new jokes for Alistair, please send them through. <laughs> Likewise, if you want any questions that you think Johnny can answer without boring his all to death, please post them. I don't know what you do on this thing, put them in the comments, tweet them. I don't yeah. know, get them to us somehow and uh, Chief Cameraman Booker will ask them, I'm sure. Thank you, see you next time for a fireside chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, do that at all. <laughs>